Hey, hey, welcome back to Muse of Mavri. I'm Mavri, and right now we're going to be watching Dororo episode 11. So, last episode, we left on a little bit of a cliffhanger, I guess you could say. We finally learned the backstory of Hekimaru's brother, Tahomaru, and in the final closing epi in the final closing scene, we finally have the fated encounter between Yakimaru and Tahomaru. So, what are they going to do now? Are they going? Is he starting to suspect Yakimaru might have something to do with this baby that his father is obsessed with and his mom is obsessed with? Well, we shall see, right? Let's just get into the episode right now, since I don't think there's really much to talk about from last episode. So, let's begin in three, two, one. Play. And of course, Sahamaru seems to be an okay character as of right now. Seems to be an upstanding person, has morals, cares for his men, is smart, is strong. Well, let's just see if he can continue to be that way throughout the entire series. Right, this is what happened. Hmm. Yeah, Tahamaru, you probably own Hyakimaru one. Is he gonna see the family crest? Ah, alright. I should have expected the opening. Let me just skip this real quick and I'll see you guys in a second. And back. Oh, it's another multi part one. Nice. And it's a direct continuation as well, so. Hmm. Does he actually sense anything from him? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's not going to say who he is. That doesn't mean anything because his father and his mother don't know of this name. Yeah, what does that mean? Huh? I probably should have paid more attention to how the other people looked, but weren't they similar? Except they didn't have as much gray. I guess. Mm, yeah, an inferiority complex. Hmm. 
So what now? I guess that's it for now, and they're going to enter into the next story, the next monster. Oh, another Biwa player. Okay. I think we should learn by now that people who are singing... <laughs> Means something is going to happen. Hmm? What? You can't see that. How do you expect him to see a play? What? <laughs> Come on, Dororo, be more considerate of Hakimaru. Isn't it ironic? Hmm? Ah, there's Biomaru. Again, quite ironic in a way. Oh yeah, he left first, so he doesn't know what happened. Well, well. Oh, so that's how it goes. So is that like representation of bloodlust in a way? Okay. So, so they all think it's the goddess that's protecting them. Hmm. But 
How? Mm. You can't just go around assuming that somebody with no arms and leg is your child. Right away, I did explain a little bit about the Asakuras in my last episode, so if you guys want to check that out, yeah, you can learn a little bit of Senkoku Jidai clans. Yeah, what does he see? Mm, lots of bloodlust. You would think that they would want to, you know, get rid of that wall. Seems like a tactical oversight to allow that wall to be there, by the side of Asakura, I mean. I mean, you're essentially allowing a staging area for your enemy. So, do they both believe? Yeah. All right. He's Mm. Yeah, there's that part as well. But, uh, this is so hard. So, obviously Daigo is an asshole, right? And a douchebag for doing this to his son. And he clearly has ulterior motives to... Oh, so he knows now. And he obviously has ulterior motives of his own. Like, he wants to be a great, uh, a great warlord or something. But then again, 
if just by sacrifice sacrificing your own son, you're able to guarantee the prosperity of your lands and your people. <sighs> like, think about it. How many people were saved by the land being this bountiful? Hmm. What would have really been interesting would be if Daigo is actually uh, has his own sense of justice instead of just being a more selfish person. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. Do they actually have a material body? Hmm. All right. Reinforcements? Yep. Is it going to like gather into one big one? Really? Well, they're fairly weak. Don't go, you're gonna die if you do it. Okay. That kid is probably as good as dead. Well, or maybe he can come. Um. Yep, there we go. Gathering into one big one. Ooh, a nine tail. Okay. No, oh, he's older. <laughs> but who is that girl? Another one of the midwives of that time? No. Stab! Hmm? 
where are the arrows coming from? Oh, it's Daigo. Oh, so, yeah, she was one of the helpers of the midwife. A bit overtly dramatic, but alright. At least it gets the point across. Mm. And Biwamaru is like, I know what she did, Daigo. Hmm. And this is probably it. Oh. Now that's a bad omen if I've seen one. Alright, alright. That was nice. Uh, I have a quick, I guess, review and discussion after this, and I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty, so that was episode 11. Uh, let's talk about some more easy stuff first, right? So the monster that appeared within this episode is essentially a Cubico, right? A nine-tailed fox. Um, I guess most people, if you're an avid anime watcher or something, would probably know of this. Uh, it appears in Pokemon, it appears in Naruto. Uh, it's fairly a common monster, right? Now, the interesting thing about the QB is that it's actually also not a uh, entirely Japanese uh, folklore-based monster. So, the the Kubiko is actually originally from China, and it's actually from like one of the very first dynasties of China. Um, myth folklore from that time. Um, so. Hmm, let me think about it. Should I should I talk about this? There's there's this Okay, so the last Emperor of the Shang dynasty uh basically was a tyrant, right? And so he also had a wife called Daji. Uh the the folklore the, the myth goes that Daji is actually a you know, a beautiful woman that was transformed by this Cubico monster, right? So these nine-tailed foxes, uh, it's a monster, so it transformed itself into a beautiful woman and then, you know, captivated the emperor and so led his empire into ruin. The, this emperor was eventually overthrown and he became the last emperor of the Shang dynasty. Uh, so that's how the entire thing started. And it was later... Uh, then took it over to lots of overseas countries because you know China in in the past had a huge influence over the regional politics, right? So it went into Korea, it went into Vietnam, it went to Japan, and etc. etc. So that is the I guess trivial fact about the QB Co. Um, so that's that. I like to expand a little bit more about uh, what I said within the episode in regards to I guess the morality issues. So. It seems that this uh, this anime or this work is going to be making out Daigo to be this you know he he's an asshole right he is doing he sacrificed Yakimaru essentially to gain power because of you know more selfish reasons but I don't know I feel like it would have been a very interesting dynamic if instead Daigo was you know he he was this upstanding character who who simply wanted to protect his people he wanted to do something to alleviate the issues that this land and his people had and if he was made into this kind of character and then he sacrificed Hakimaru to gain you know essentially making a deal with the devil right but for the greater good and yeah, I feel like that would 
bring out more of these moral conundrums, and that would make the whole thing much more interesting, at least from a, you know, from a debate perspective, right? Like, is the sa- is the sacrifice of one worth it to if you can benefit all these other people? Like I said, you know, before before Hakimaru was sacrificed to demons, this land was poor. People were starving and dying out of famine, out of droughts, out of epidemics, and so on and so forth. So by sacrificing Hakimaru, how many people were actually saved, right? And if you start to think of it that way, you know, it becomes very interesting, right? So. You, you, you kill a child, yeah, that's that sucks, but at the same time, how many thousands, even tens of thousands of people were saved because of this? I don't know, I just find like, I just think that this is actually a more interesting, uh, more problem than right, right now, since we know that uh, Daigo is more selfish, so we know who's in the right and who's in the wrong. And now, if instead, you know, if you know the, all of these thousands of people that are living on Daigo's land are only living because of the sacrifice of Hakimaru, and now that Hakimaru is trying to get his body back, he's breaking all these uh, these blessings from the demons. Those people are probably going to die again, or at least live a harder life, and in the process, probably a lot of them will die. Right. So I feel like that would be a much more interesting thing to talk about. But in any case. I'm assuming that by the end of this series, they're also going to address this problem, right? Because, you know, if Kakimaru does get his body back, you know, everything will go go to hell, right? The entire land will become poor again, epidemics will spread, uh, war is imminent, and so on and so forth. So, pro- they're probably going to have to have to resolve this situation in some way um, as well. Like, maybe there actually was a curse placed upon this land, and so Kakimaru eventually removed a curse or something like that? And anyways, that's that. Some interesting things to think about from this episode. Anyways, that's been episode 11. Uh, let's just go into episode 12, where, uh, I knew, you know, I wasn't expecting uh, Tahumaru and Daigo to actually catch up to date on the situation and confront Hakimaru this quickly, but apparently that's going to happen. So, uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. So, this has been Maverick from Musings of Memory, and I'll see you guys next time.